Today is the 4th of July. And I was reflecting upon the 4th of July of today versus the 4th of July of 1982. And it's a fundamentally huge difference. I remember waking up and walking outside to the robust smell of barbecue. This is how it went down in Adamsville, Alabama in 1982. People would get up on the 4th of July and they would fire up the grills. They would fire up the grills and they would cook the meat. And there was a multitude of grills. You would have some people like we had the little cheap grill and the Giles had the the grill that was a barrel cut in half and was made. Um, Mr. Giles used to make these grills. And you had a multitude of grills and you have people who have fire pits and stuff. But literally, the smell of barbecue was everywhere. And what they would do is they would get up, say, 8, 9, 10 o'clock, fire up the grill, put the meat on the grill. And, well, actually fire up the grill for about maybe an hour and then let it cool off and then put the meat on the grill. And I was thinking. 1982 was the last time that I remember the robust smell of barbecue. It happened in 1983 and 84 and 85, but I was becoming a man and I was doing other things. So I started to think, because like today, it's not like that. And I was wondering why it was like that. Why did we have that type of activity? And I started to think, what would make a man or woman get up and cook barbecue early in the morning? Because it was centered around family. And as we've had the breakdown of the family unit, many of these notions and rituals and traditions have fallen to the wayside because I remember Mr. Kennebrew and Mr. Kennebrew was a, he was a funny man. He would come out in his pants and the white tank top and suspenders. And he would be out there messing with the grill and doing this stuff. And all right, let's talk about the program. The program is a comprehensive because it includes the intellectual property school and it includes the art of profit business school. It is a comprehensive program that also includes home economics. That's going to guide you from how to manage your money to how to make your money and how to create your corporate empire. This is a curriculum. This isn't a course. It is a collection of courses. It's a college level curriculum to help you level up and improve your life. So one of the things that happened, and this happened in June, because, you know, you can get in for 72% off. Use the promo code million dollar game to get into the program. And what's going to happen, because this is human nature, people are going to wait. I literally had 80 people pile in on the 30th, you know, and I don't know what's up with that. But you don't want to wait because your future is waiting. I want you to imagine your life three years from today. I want you to imagine you have a fully funded emergency fund, fully short funded short term emergency fund and your family operating account. I want you to imagine having no debt. The cars in your driveway or garage are paid for. You've got money in the bank. You've got no debt three years in the future. And your life is amazing. You can do what you want to do. You can enjoy the life you want. You can get married. And I'm about to, you can get married and have your wife stay at home with your children. Three years. If you go ahead and get started today. Get started today. Stop waiting because here's the thing. And I, I don't a lot of people. You as a rank beginner who's never started a business, who's never had an LLC, who's never. It's going to take you time to learn this. I used to be just like you. I was a working stiff. I had three jobs. Three jobs. I didn't know any of this stuff. And it took me time to learn this. My first digital product. It took me three years to get to a million dollars. Three. Three. So once again. Go ahead and enroll in the program or enroll in the intellectual property school and start working on your future today. Literally, you could like walk around and talk to people as they were grilling and have conversations because it was community. And the community was centered around family. 
And one of the reasons that we have all the problems that we have today is we've gotten away from family. America used to be wholesale about the family unit. This is how you would have an uncle who did well. He would actually set up a trust fund for family members he hasn't seen in years. Because it was all about the family and supporting the family and taking care of the family. And that is something that we as a country has gotten away with. Now, this still exists in small towns in the Midwest. It's still very much a thing out there. But in the cities where more than 60% of the population lives, it's not what it used to be. It's not even close. And one of the things I'm looking at is why are we here? And the first thing, there, there's two variables. There's two big, big variables. Men, number one, have become less manly from a hormone profile level to an activity level. And many women have outpriced themselves out of the market. Now, what do I mean by that? I will talk about a recent event that happened in my life. Um, my ex-girlfriend got knocked because I found someone who was better suited to the things that I want. And incidentally, uh, she has COVID. She's caught COVID twice, so she's self-isolating. Hopefully, I will see her this weekend. But I looked at this whole dynamic. There is a lot of talk and appreciation of dating, quote, a boss chick, a chick who makes money. And when you look at the less masculine male of today, they can appreciate a boss chick because they're less manly. So they can appreciate her masculine tendencies because they don't have these tendencies themselves. I've been listening to Modern Wisdom. It's a podcast here on YouTube and Apple. The host name is Chris Williamson. He brings on a lot of professors and researchers and authors. I love it. It's just my jam. And they've been having some very interesting discussions about what happens when a man goes to a university that has more women than men. And if you want to get laid and get in college, go to a university that has a 60 to 70 percent female population because the competition for men is fierce. Anytime you have an inequity in the makeup of the demographic, Certain behaviors will ensue. And I was listening to the podcast and I remember when I used to be at Schofield Barracks and where the demographic racial makeup for there was like 50 black men to every single black woman. It's like a 50 to one ratio. And I saw some crazy stuff that happened out there. I saw some amazing outcomes because there was such a disparity in black women to quote Kevin Samuels average at best an average at best black woman in that environment could be dating a lieutenant because there was such a disparity in the numbers so personally I saw the uh, cause and effects that they were talking about on the podcast I saw it with my own two eyes. I actually saw this and it, it's a hundred percent true. Whenever there's one group that outnumbers the other, like if there are more men and this is something that's really, really wild. This is really, really wild. When there are more men than women, the level of crime and violence goes up. Crime and violence goes up because there's too many men out there who cannot pair up. 
there's something else that is also happening that is going to blow your mind. This is the wildest thing. Because in our society, we have so many single, unattached women, the number of women going to prison and committing violent crimes is at an all time high. So when you have a bunch of men who are unattached, who are not getting sex, crime and violence goes up. Well, guess what? The same thing happens to women. And right now, if you Google it, the number of women going to prison is at an all time high. All time high. Because what we have experienced in America is the breakdown of the family unit. And we have a bunch of female savages. I did the video talking about that. And we have a bunch of very, very weak men. And looking back in the 4th of July of 1982, I remember seeing many strong, masculine men, men who took pride in their house, took pride in their lawn, took pride in their families. And that's what I grew up with. So when I compare and contrast what I grew up with, what we're experiencing now, I am beginning to see why we as a society have the problems that we have. Number one, we have many women who have outpriced themselves out the market. Now, what do I mean by this? These are women who've gone to college, who've gotten careers and making six figures. They want a man that makes six figures or preferably way more. So instead of looking down, they're looking up. And these women are having a bunch of problems dating because, go ahead and share what happened with me. Uh, my ex, the girl that got knocked, was an entrepreneur. And one of the things that we had because uh, I was with her because she's beautiful. She's got the hooker body. But one thing she didn't have was time. And we would see each other once a week, even though she only lived like 15 minutes away. And what happened was I met someone else that brought such positive energy because uh my current girlfriend who incidentally has covid um brought so much energy brought so many useful skill sets to me that i immediately made a decision to replace my uh ex with her because one of the things is I'm a man of science. I'm a man of practicality. And I understand that life is short. And in terms of happiness and in terms of um, compatibility. So even though the ex was very beautiful, crazy body, I mean, literally we would go out and people would literally stop and stare at her. Cause she was just that bad, but it wasn't enough because she had this notion that she wanted to be married, but she wanted to be married to a man who was away. She didn't want to spend a lot of time in a relationship and I'm a relationship in a relationship. I want to spend time with my girl. And she was, we were complete polar opposites in that regard, which is one of the reasons she's got knocked. And I started to think, looking at how society is today and looking at how um, things are going today, we have all of these women who absolutely refuse to be useful helpmates, refuse. 
Brittany Rentner just did a video talking about why women shouldn't be submissive. And one of the rules, if you would know it with the masculine frame, number one, get your economics together. Number two, get your body together. Number three, get your mental together. Number four, date, date submissive women. And one of the things that the average female has in her mind is she doesn't want to be a submissive and agreeable helpmate. She wants to be a full-fledged equal partner. But this is the problem with that. She wants to be a full-fledged equal partner in theory because when it comes down to actually being a dutiful, equitable partner where you are 100% responsible for, you know, bringing in money and doing certain things. A lot of women resent that. I remember I had a friend. She was married to a man. She made like 150 and she married a man who made like 60. And when they went to buy a house because uh, he had bad credit, they had to buy the house in her name only. And it became a thing. She resented that she was in the position to get this house. And she, you know, I mean, it, it, it just kept getting worse and worse and worse because she actually resented being with him. Because I remember one time we were out to lunch and she says, you know, I feel like the man in the relationship. Those were her exact words. And many women do not want to be the man in the relationship. But because of so many women have become successful, they're making money, they have careers, they've put themselves in an untenable position where it is very hard for them to find partners. Because um, Tony Lauren, she did this rant talking about men and all these other things and her, her peer group and how all of them were frustrated because the thing is, these women want to date men such as myself, successful, financially successful men with something going on. But as I told you with the situation where I actually got rid of one of those chicks, I got rid of her because I wanted, you know, on my Art of Profit podcast, I actually have an episode that deals with that because as an entrepreneur, as a male entrepreneur, you need to date a normal average woman, not a boss chick, because it's going to get very frustrating and knowing at some point. And as a female entrepreneur, and that's this is some of that strong cocaine that the female entrepreneurs do not want to take. You need to date a man who is happy being average. But do the female hypergamy that is that, that's just so distasteful to the average high powered career hard charging woman. It's just very distasteful. They want to date a Tom Brady. They want to date a Lewis Hamilton. They don't want to date Jake who works in the uh, supermarket. They don't want to date a Jake. And this is why. You have so many successful, financially successful women with careers who are alone. At no point in history have we had so many uh, women who are alone. Who are just alone. They cannot find anybody that they want. That's the key. They can, there are men that they can meet, marry, and go on dates and have a relationship with, get married, and have children. But they don't want those men. And the men, that's a whole nother, whew, that's a whole nother bag. That's a whole nother bag. There are many men who are incapable of being a leader. I've talked about this. From a hormonal standpoint, it has been scientifically proven that men of today have less testosterone than men of 20 and 30 years ago. So from a hormone profile, they are less 
manly. And from an attitude standpoint, they're less manly. And from, uh, cause here's the thing, um, as a man, and you can be mad at me and you can throw things at the computer screen. It is your prerogative to be a leader, head of household, a protector and a provider. That is part of the grand design. That is your prerogative. And many men will abdicate that responsibility. They want nothing to do with it. Nothing to do with it. Because this is one of the reasons that the big toe, red pill movements, purple pill, black pill, whatever movements are so popular. And I will say the early members of MGTO were men who were seeking to solve a problem. And what has happened is the group has morphed into a bunch of whiners and complainers because I was doing some training and I was showing that if you want to start a successful channel in the manosphere, just start a channel disparaging, um, talking about women, just start a channel doing that. And you will, you will do quite well because men are looking for not a solution. They're looking for an echo chamber and they're looking to commiserate, which is very feminine behavior. How many times have you been with a woman and she had a problem and she tells you her problem and instead of listening, you go into activate mode where you try to solve her problem and she gets mad because she's like, I don't want you to solve my problems. I just want you to listen to me. Very feminine behavior that many men are mirroring because in my video, a lot of men who feel that they're masculine and I'm talking about men who lift weights, go to the gym. They feel that they're very masculine, but in effect, they're extremely feminine, extremely feminine in mindset, activity, and from a hormonal level. And, you know, to touch back on what happens when there are too many men who are unattached. And you're seeing this in China right now. Criminal activity goes through the roof. Dysfunction goes through the roof. And what has happened, as I mentioned earlier, we now are having large segments of women who are unattached, who are not in a relationship. And the number of women going to prison is at an all time high. So this isn't the behavior of a bunch of unattached men. This is human behavior of any group of population that is significant in size and you have a bunch of them who are unattached. And this is one of the reasons that the classes don't mix because typically in the upper middle class, marriage is still very much a real thing. And every time I talk about, you know, getting married and you should have a family and you should be the head of household and you should be the man, I get men who get upset because they don't want that responsibility. They don't want to be the responsibility. They don't want to be head of household. You will see story after story of men who did this and you will see how they got screwed or ended up in divorce court, not seeing their kids and all this other stuff. You will see story after story about that in the manosphere. But what you will not see is that men who have money, once again, the first mandate of the masculine frame, the divorce rate is significantly lower. You want to know why? There's less stress in the marriage. It's just that simple. If you are a man, I have a friend whose son has at Georgia Tech, he's coming out with a computer scientist um, a degree, and he's going to walk into a $150,000 a year job. He is literally beating chicks off his dick because they know that this dude is going to walk into, I mean, literally he has Asian women jockeying for his attention because typically this is what happens in college. Women are not stupid. They know what your degree is. They know what your income possibilities are. 
and he's he he was over. I was over there, and he was talking about, you know, there's this girl from China. She trying to lock him down. She trying to lock him down. So, if you put yourself in a position to be, quote, a high value man, unquote, you will have women competing for your attention. Let me say that again. If you put yourself in a be a position like this guy is little, and he he ain't nothing special. He's like 5'9", kind of dorky looking. He literally has some lined up. Because they know this dude going to come out of college and be making some money. But the average man would rather whine in an echo chamber than to level up. And this is one of the reasons, because uh, once again, my thesis is that the reason that society is the way that we is we are is because men have abdicated the leadership position and what has happened, you know, the natural order of the universe is atrophy. Without an active hand on stuff, things literally just fall apart. And because men are not leading, being the providers and protectors, it's just falling apart. And women, the number of women who are becoming violent, the number of women who are going to jail is at an all time high because it is not normal to be out here in these streets by yourself. And people are suffering mental illness. They're suffering emotional meltdowns because they are alone, which brings us back to the topic, the 4th of July. Until men start to be the rightful leaders and protectors, society will continue to decline. You know how many women I have met that have dated women? It's gotten that bad that a lot of heterosexual women have given dating another woman a shot. It has become a crazy, crazy thing. Crazy, crazy thing. But... Just some reflections on what is happening on this holiday and where we are in America and how we got here. Because I see this problem getting worse. Because, once again, I have given good counsel, wisdom, and insights to men. And some of you, to your credit, have taken me up. And you've done it and you leave comments in the in the comment section that, man, your life has improved. But many men simply do not want to do the work. They just don't. And they're hoping. And this is why the incel movement is growing. Uh, listening to Chris Williamson, Modern Wisdom, the number of men since 2010 who are not having sex has tripled. And this is going to create a lot of angst, anxiety and disruptive outcomes in our society. The worst thing to happen in society is to have a bunch of single men. And now we have a bunch of single men and we have a bunch of single women. And both of these classes are being highly disruptive in doing criminal conduct and spazzing out because they can't find nobody. I mean, it is, it's, it's kind of crazy. It is really, really kind of crazy. But that's where we are in uh, July, 4th of July, 2022, in the year of our Lord. That's where we are. That's where we are. 